Hi everybody, this is Kevin Hurley with Pest Ed, and we're here to do a training video for you. This is going to be a home inspection, and this is a, uh, a home that was just purchased, oh, I don't know, about a month ago, and the homeowners let us come back in, and we're going to, we're going to do an inspection, not, not for a home inspection for a, a, you know, a professional home inspector. We're, we're going to focus more on a wood-destroying insect report and just general pest. You know, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna be looking for termites, carpenter ants, wood boring beetles, but we're also gonna be looking for mice and ants and stored product pests, silverfish, anything we can find, basically. So you have a couple, uh, hopefully we'll be able to help you out with a couple things here. If you're doing just an intense wood destroying organism report, uh, we're gonna point out all the things that you would normally wanna look for and be aware of or maybe a customer called you out and just says, hey, I want pest control. Can you come out and do an inspection and tell me what you know, I need in my house? So let's take a look at some of the tools we'll need. Um, first of all, I want to say we've already walked through here, so I, there's not a crawl space in the house. So I'm not wearing a hard hat. Uh, I'm not wearing blue jeans. I'm not going to have to get on my hands and knees here. But normally, you'd want to have a hard hat or at least a bump hat, which is a little, you know, one step down, just so you don't hit your head on a nail or something. If you're going in a crawl space or an attic, this this particular house is uh, a very small one-story home, well, with a basement, and it does have an attic, but it's inaccessible. It's more just like an airflow space. Uh, so I'm not wearing the jeans. I'm not wearing the hard hat. I do have some safety glasses. These, these are indispensable because we're gonna be going into places and poking around and we don't want insulation to fall into our eyes and you know, dirt, and the soap plate and all that. So uh, wear clear safety glasses when you're indoors. Uh, shaded ones, they kind of look shady and also you can't see as well. Also we have a roller tape. Now this would be if you're going, if we do find termites, you'd want to measure the house you got to get the linear footage of the house and this is a great tool now a friend of mine gave me this one I don't like it and I'll tell you why first of all the wheels too small okay and it picks up every little rock and every little bump and it's just terrible for that and the, the tightening mechanism is lame and it also doesn't extend you know, when, when you look at this, you think, oh wow, this is a, that's it. You maybe get a couple more inches out of this. So you're gonna be leaning over. They have nice ones with big wheels and you can stay upright, which is a lot better. So I'll just give you, before you go out and buy one, you know, you may wanna consider the big wheel and longer extension. Some, that's faster. And if you're alone, that's the tool to use. If you have another person, like the cameraman, you can, you can use a tape measure, which is going to be very accurate because you're not going to pick up um, dips and rolls and you're not going to have to go over weeds and rocks and uh, all other kinds of obstacles that will be in the way. However, if you're alone, this can be a little bit of a problem to work with. You know, it, it's not going to stay in place. Uh, it's always, these are good with two people. A probing tool. Now, this is a pretty big probing tool, but it's what I like to use when I'm looking for wood destroying organisms in a basement. It's not too long, it's not dangerously long, uh, but a short, a lot of guys I see, they'll go out there with a screwdriver. A screwdriver may be this long, so you're gonna go out there and you got that much space. You know, you, with this, you, you can get up over sill plates, you know, you can poke around and you got another maybe uh, 10, 11 inches of of reach getting behind things so I like this I'll show you how we use it down in the basement we're not gonna you know bang into things and break things it's really more just like a soft tapping and a little bit of pressure on the sill plates or exposed wood members but uh, it's good to have a, a long probing tool and in the colder climates you'll want these earmuffs these are always no I'm just kidding uh, Definitely, if you were, there was a crawl space, you definitely want to get knee pads because maybe when you're young, you know, 
that's not a problem, you crawl around, but when you hit 50, you've been doing this for 20 years without knee pads, you're not going to have any cartilage left. So we're still thinking about equipment when we're doing our home inspection, and one of the most important tools is going to be your flashlight. Uh, this flashlight is probably about 10 years old. It is a Streamlight Ultra Stinger. When, when I bought this, it was one of the best flashlights you could get in the marketplace. But, um, and it's still good. It's got the uh, old halogen type uh, lights. Nowadays, we have LED lights and different companies make them. I'm not sure if Streamlight makes them. There's about five different companies. And these LED lights are intense. But I paid over a hundred bucks for this 10 years ago and I'm just too cheap to go out and buy a new one. But you, sh you should look into the higher power lights. The more power you have, the more lumens you have, it makes your job so much easier. So let's see what we need. We're going to get my safety glasses and my probing tool. The rest of the stuff we don't need right now. We'll get it out of the way so don't get trips over it. Um, I'm not going to need those knee pads because as I said before, there's no crawl space. It, oh, always get yourself a holster for your flashlight. When you're down in there, you don't want to have to set it down on things. It's going to roll off the washing machine and crack right when you need it. And it'll probably happen at the beginning of your inspection, which is going to ruin your whole inspection. So get yourself a holster. You can even get another little holster for the uh, probing tool. However, um, I'm going to keep this in my hand the whole time. I'm constantly using it, so I found that for me it's not really necessary. But it's a good idea. And the safety glasses, as soon as we get down to the basement, we're going to put those on. Uh, something to think about. It just rained last night, so it's really wet out around the outside of the building. So we don't want to do the outside of the building first and track mud into the customer's house. You know, they're going to, I mean, I've had customers in the, you know, in the past say, well, your guy has to come and clean my house now. You know, we had to hire a cleaning company because somebody had mud on their shoes and got it on their carpet. So we want to avoid that or reduce it at all costs. Uh, so we're going to go, we're going to wipe our feet before we go in, and we're going to go down into the basement first. And then we're going to work our way up to the first floor, which there probably won't be a lot to see as far as wood destroying organisms, but we may find some pests. And then we're going to come do the outside of the property. So let's walk over here first. And let's look at some of the things that the homeowner, this is a, you know, a typical house. Guy living here, he's got his grill and all kinds of stuff for me to trip over. Uh, it appears that this person also has a dog. Based on that, that way that that thing is anchored in, it might be a very big dog. Could even be a bull or something. I don't know. This could be, see, we don't know right now. Are we going to walk in there and deal with an angry pit bull? Or is it going to be a little Habanese that's going to lick our boots? I don't know. So that's something, you know, you got to always ask the customer, do you have any pets? Anything I should be aware of? Are there any sick people in the house? Are there any areas that you don't want me to go? You know, uh, for a wood destroying insect report, you'd want to be able to access everything. But for a regular pest control inspection, I've been to houses where in a small room, there was an elderly person on an oxygen tank, and they just don't want you going in there. So you gotta ask these things, and uh, make sure you don't offend anybody when you go into the house. You know, remember, this is where they live, so that's really our priority. Our first priority, of the, even before finding the pests, is we don't, we don't wanna offend anybody. We don't wanna you know, cause them any undue stress or any harm. So think about that when you go in, think about what it's like for someone to come into your home. So let's take a look up, cameraman, if you could point straight up there. Right off the bat, we got, uh, we definitely, we're in the Northeast here and carpenter ants are king in the Northeast in the summer. So we have a lot of branches on this maple tree that are touching the house and leaning over the top of the house, which allows access or the carpenter ants and other pests, but mostly we're concerned about carpenter ants. Okay, we have part of a shop back here. You know, let's take a look in this. What, what might we find here? Okay, so we got maple trees. I don't know what this is. It looks like stuff falling off a maple tree, or if you look a little closer, it actually looks like seed particles. 
So maybe a little chipmunk or something comes here when no one's around, or he's above in the trees above, and he's eating the seeds off this maple tree and spitting them out because they're chewed up. You know, these are the, what I'm talking about, these things. This is what a normal one looks like. So now I'm wondering, hmm, what's going on here? So I, you gotta be thinking all the time. Uh, looks like we have an area under here that we're not gonna go into at this time. I think there's a better access around back. Uh, this is a single family home. So let's go in. We already know the homeowner's not here, so. Uh, Okay, so we're gonna go down to the basement. We got our safety glasses on, got the flashlight, got the probing tool. Everybody has different kinds of basements, so be careful. Priority one, you don't wanna get hurt. There's a hand railing, come on down. There's some lighting down here. Now what I like to do, as soon as, you know, is take a whiff, right? Now I just step down in here and I notice it's humid. And I can smell a little mustiness. So I know there's a dampness here. There might be some water issues, and that's a concern, certainly, if there's a sump pump. There's a lot of uh, the pest, the termiticide labels. If you find termites and there's an active sump pump, they're, depending on your state, um, may not even allow you to treat it, or they may you have to shut the sump pump off for a period of time, which could cause problems in the house, or you might have to do a trench pull the soil out, treat it, and then put it back in. There's all kinds of rules. So that moisture issue, and I'm getting a little smell of it right now, is something to be concerned about immediately. Um, let's get the flashlight out. There's a dehumidifier down here. So yeah, we know we got some moisture issues. You're likely to find silverfish and that sort of thing. But, re but So here we go. We've had some water intrusion in this basement in the past. So I'm going to come in here and get right in your way. But first I'm going to look up, make sure not too much is going to fall on my head like a black widow. Now it looks okay. Um, we've got a lot of cobwebs. We've got some dirt down here. So we want to check this dirt. And I knew just by looking at it that it wasn't, you know, from termites because it's the wrong color. It's the wrong consistency. But... It doesn't hurt to scrape it away. Let's make sure we don't have any termites. This kind of thing right here is an indic, you know, it can be, you gotta be very concerned when you see mud. But what this mud is, is sometime in the past, this basement has flooded more than once. It's probably flooded a bunch of times, or maybe not flooded, but water has weeped in and it's pulled the soil in from the outside. Doesn't mean it's a bad house, you know, it's an old house, it's a good place to live, but it's something to be concerned about. Now I'm gonna start probing this a little, just softly. That would be normally rotted or have termites in it and it feels pretty solid, so I'm not too worried. Uh, you'll notice the wood up down here is all, eh, it's kind of pecky, we'll call it, but there's no, termites in it, so that's okay. And we're gonna look around up here. Uh, termites like corners. They like where two wood members meet. You see them coming out of a joist a lot or coming right out of the corner. So we're gonna take a good look. I'm just gonna sound this. Now, I don't wanna take my, my probing tool and smash into it because if there were termites there, I might go five, six inches into the beam and then the, the homeowner's gonna blame me for the damage because until I came here, they didn't see any damage. So then now they're gonna say I did it and that's gonna be a legal issue. So nice, you know, easy tap. I don't see any shot holes from powder post beetles. Everything sounds pretty good. We got a lot of spiders though. So that's, we're gonna want the homeowner to be aware of that. Again, not for wood destroying insects, report, but just for the simple fact that if they want a pest control program. I like to work in one direction all the time. I usually go counterclockwise. I don't know why, but it works for me. So we're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, so they have spiders. Spiders are an indication that there are other insects around. So we'll keep, spiders are on our side, by the way. 
look at that, they're helping us kill other insects, but some people just freak out and don't like them. So let's unlock this, see where it goes, Bill code doors. This would be a really common place to find some kind of termite infestation. Anytime you have wood to ground contact, now this isn't wood to ground, this is wood on slab, but we want to sound this. Oh, we got a soft spot here. So we're going to dig through it. It looks to be just rotted. It's just rotted. There's no galleries from termites in there. If you look, it's just rotted wood. So over the years, water settled in. Sometimes it's from where a nail hole was or a screw hole. The water sits there and it just gets bigger and bigger. But not a wood destroying organism issue. We got a lot of these cobwebs. We're gonna get them out of the way. Another place we wanna look is here. This is relatively new wood. So these steps are pretty new. So somebody replaced them. Now that's a nice thing and you go, ah, oh, maybe they just needed to be replaced. But you also may wanna think as an inspector, why did they replace them? Were there termites? Maybe they had a problem with termites. So I wanna take an extra careful look down here. Concrete, concrete. And I'm going to go right to the back. I'm looking for mud tunnels now. I don't see any exploratory tunnels for termites. I don't see any. I don't see any wings. I don't see any termite body parts. And even people who are trying to hide things like termite damage, they're usually not astute enough to, you know, get rid of the, the wings. They'll get rid of the old wood, but they don't know. Oh, because if there was a swarm there, they wouldn't think to vacuum up those old wings, so you want to keep an eye out for that. Evidence of wings is evidence of termites, so that's important. Uh, but this looks good. This house, this house was built in the 40s or 50s, and it's just got a lot of different things going on. There's been a lot of changes made over the years. We have sheetrock over hollow block foundation. Now, uh, every state's different. You see, here's the hollow block. And here's the sheetrock. Well, this is a furred out wall. This sheetrock, though, appears to be drilled. Yeah, it is, right? No, this is furred out, too. But there's a lot of uh, termite regulations in various states and labels that do not allow you to treat the outside of that if it's hollow block without having two people, one person has to stand on the inside to see if any of the termite side is weeping into the building so they can stop pumping right away and perform a cleanup. Uh, so you, this is something to be aware of for, for a termite treatment, a liquid termite treatment, which is why a lot of people have gone to Bates. Uh, you don't have to mess with any of that. So we have all kinds of things. So in here we're gonna trip um, this stove. I think the last time I saw this stove, American or furnace, it was uh, in the movie It's a Wonderful Life. I think they use this. This one's been around for a while, folks, but it's still working. Hot water heater. This is an area where the slab contracts and expands, contracts and expands in the winter, especially when this turns on, and that's going to leave little cracks in the slab, and that's where termites can come up. So I always like to look around in these areas in the cobwebs for termite tubes, um, excuse me, termite wings. And I don't see any, so that's good. Another good place to look. I'm getting cobwebs all over me, so you're gonna see me itching at imaginary things, but they're actually cobwebs I'm in my face. And um, New windows and no termite wings up here. Uh, they chipped away at this when they, made, when they made it. Years ago, somebody ran some electrical lines in there. And keep looking, corners, nothing, 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 nothing. All this stuff. Now, if you were doing this just to look for pests for a customer, you want to get down here. And again, we got spiders, 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 and, and more wood on the ground. But in a wood destroying organism report, you're going to have a lot of places that are inaccessible like that furred out wall. So you want to say in your report, uh, this is an inaccessible area. We cannot see behind that wall. And it's not your responsibility to make that accessible. 
that's up to the customer if they want to, uh, but you are not responsible for tearing things off so that you can do a better inspection. But you have to note it so that you protect yourself. There's a lot of cases where the, the, home in, the termite inspector or the wood destroying organism inspector went into the house, there was an inaccessible area, for instance, right? Behind here, it's inaccessible. Customer buys the house. Six months later, they decide they want to refinish this basement. They pull this away, and there's tens of thousands of dollars worth of termite damage back there. They sue the guy who did the inspection because he didn't know inaccessible areas. You have to note that. Even if you note it, they'll probably sue you anyway. But you have to have something to protect you. Okay, so we've finished our uh, first pass through anyway of the basement area and we didn't find any wood destroying organisms and we really didn't find too many pests, didn't find any mouse droppings. Uh, now, so this customer, you know, when we talk to them about a pest control program, we may want to point out that they've got thousands of spiders and that could freak them out right there. So that might be enough and they'll say, all right, come in and do pest control for us. But it really depends on the person. Now we're going to go upstairs. We're going to do a walk around, kind of look at kitchens and bathrooms mostly, not be too intrusive. Uh, the places where our food is um, and moisture is, kitchens and bathrooms, that's where the pests are going to be. So we don't need to go look under the beds and stuff. Um, okay, let's go. So we're now at the, the uh, main floor of the single family home. Got the safety glasses on. I really don't need them here. You know, there's not stuff falling off the ceiling. Um, this probing tool, probably not necessary, but I'm gonna keep it with me. Flashlight, definitely necessary. Um, one of the places you wanna look, and here's one of the entrances, the street side entrance. Nobody really uses it. Most of them come in the back of the house, so that would be a place where if insects wanted to, they would be very happy to make their home and none of them are. So the floor is fairly well swept. Let's set this down. The spider problem we saw downstairs, we still have a couple up here. And again, we don't know what they're eating. Let's open this up. Wow, two locks. Whoa, no screen door going right out the doors. Okay. So we can uh, look at this more from the outside. We don't need to take it out there. And we have like a little foyer area over here. Always looking up, always looking down. That's what we do. And we'll come into this area. Ah! <laughs> so we knew there was a pit bull in here somewhere, right? Hi. Uh, fortunately, this is a very happy pit bull. Not the kind. He's well fed, so he's not going to eat me. But you know what? What if he wasn't? You know, this is why you got to talk to the homeowner. Hi. Yes, Rico, take it easy. What kind of dog do you have? Oh, it's a 90 pound pet bull? Well, we, we may want to have that locked up somewhere during our inspection. So we're going to let him go back. Why don't you go back in there? Oh, look who it is. Go see who it is. Yeah, bye. We're very trusting dogs. Okay. Um, I'm going to still do the clockwise thing. Um, so let's come around clockwise. This was the downstairs, uh, the stairs to the downstairs. We want to be careful not to break anything the customer owns. So when I come into a place like this, I say there's probably some young guys living here. We got pizza, beer, wine, um, the dog food. Probably maybe a couple young guys or a young couple. Uh, we're just going to take a cursory look. Now the places I want to look is uh, do they have a spice area? These are definitely young guys. They don't even have salt and pepper in this place. Ah, here we go. So this is the kind of area you want to take a look at. We got your salts and these spices. So if you're going to find, oh, you know, oh, grain moths and angu moths, grain moths, Mediterranean meal moths, spider beetles, weevils, rice weevils, granary weevils, merchant grain beetles, sawtooth grain beetles, all those kind of things. They're going to be around your spice area. Um, I think there's pancake mix here, flour. So this is a kind of place, this thing you're going to find. And I do not see anything of the sort. Um, just kind of look around a little bit more. 
Now, this is an area I like to pay a little closer attention to because this area is where we find mice droppings. They love to run back there and hide. And I see little flecks of stuff, but I don't see any mouse droppings. Probably the spiders are eating them. Because there's some big spiders down there. So this is fine. I mean, you can pull one, one or two things out. Don't go crazy, though. Everything you pull out, you got to put back. But it's not a bad idea. I'm also looking under here. See, they did kind of a quickie job so that pipe could go in. There's no, what is that thing called? Escussion plate, I think is the prop. So usually there's a plate over there that stops mice and stuff from coming up. They don't have one. So you would think if they had mice, that's where they'd be coming up. I don't see any droppings and mice like to put their droppings everywhere. So, so far, we're striking out on the insects. Um, other than the spiders, which we know are not insects. How many of you are going to send me an email? Spiders are not insects. Everybody knows they're mammals. So, we'll come over here. That Superman. I always wondered where he lived. Okay. Uh, let's see if we have it. Here we got some doggy biscuits. This would be a good place again for your stored product pass. I'd look right in the jar because sometimes they come infested right from the, the factory. But they're not. Uh, okay. More cereal. So another good place to look, right? Cereal. A little fleck of something here. Let's make sure it's not. No, nothing. So, the place is looking good. I don't see any weevils. Just nothing. Just dirt. Dirt or a seed or something. Just some little flack. Um, dear Kevin, please stop looking in my... Wow, that's strange. How did they know? And down here, no food. All good. And they're storing... Here's the thing, though. They're storing the dog food inside, which in itself is not a problem, but... Uh, again, sometimes it's dog food. If there are spider beetles or stored product pests, they're going to be drawn to this area. Also, sometimes you buy this stuff and it comes infested. It's not human-grade food. It's, it's feed. It's for animals. So they don't have the same strict measures that we follow as humans that we're required to follow. Wow, wait. We have a spider down here, but we also have... Somebody, an elephant trap, small elephants, let's see what we got here, oops, this side down, raid ant baits, do not allow children or pets to play with, with the baits, okay, abamectin, same stuff that's in exterior ant baits, so, I guess they saw ants at one time, but we're going to put it back. I don't see any ants. haven't seen an ant since I walked into the house. And um, now we're going to walk outside. Okay, now we're on the outside of the property. And right off the bat, we found something. So I missed something inside. I had to have. Um, again, hollow block foundation. Remember I told you I'm not wearing knee pads and I'm not wearing blue jeans because there's no crawl space that I could see or that I saw on the first pass through. But what would this be then? I don't know, so I'm gonna pull that. It's been painted recently and we, that doesn't help, does it? So they've got, I'll bet that pops right out though. That's a uh, foam insula, not foam, foam board insulation and I didn't bring my screwdriver with me because it's around the front of the house. But there's always a piece of ceramic material when you need one. Let's see if this... Nope, that's bad. Wow, that's a thick piece of board. Oh, you know what? It may be screwed in, so I'm not going to be able to. Yeah, it looks like they... These holes here may be screw holes. I don't want to break this, but if it comes out easy, I'm gonna, no, it's not going to come out. So this is one of those situations where mark it on the 
It's going to have to be marked on the wood destroying organism report, inaccessible area. And uh, we'll go inside and see what that goes to. But I want to look up here. We got uh, some leaves in the gutter. Nothing to do with pests, but it could be in the long run. Mosquitoes are going to lay their eggs up there if they're standing water and it's damp and they'll hatch and they'll come right inside. Now we've got a big sloping hill here. I've already taken a look down in this area, though there is a lot of, you know, there's a big parking lot at the back of this house. There's litter and, uh, you know, people throw their soda bottles over and they're sometimes they're wrappers. So I walked down there and I didn't see any rat holes. I would expect to have seen some rat holes, but there were none at all. So other than being generally a little unkept, uh, it's not a pest issue at this point. There was a woodchuck hole over to the left. And you can see here some wet insulation. If you remember, we had wet insulation in the basement. So there was a leak, there was some water problem. We don't know where it came from. It happened before we got here. And let's keep going. The hollow block has been recently painted. And we're gonna look up, look all around. There's some more of that absorbent material. So what happened was when this person that lived here, this homeowner, or whoever did the cleanup work, they, they just took everything that was wet out of the basement and they threw it out here. And the, their soak up material, they just, you know, shop vacked it probably or scooped it with a shovel and threw it out here to let it dry. Although it's very shady here, so it's probably not going to dry too easily. At some point, they'll come and pick it up and, and move it all away and police this area a little better. Let's take a look at these boards may, may have been down there. We don't know, but we can see some ants crawling there. We got a carpenter ant. So now we're going to note for our report that carpenter ants were found on the outside of the structure. Now, they weren't in the structure. At this, at this point, they weren't even on the structure, but they're about uh, six feet from the structure. So we definitely have carpenter ants in the area. And just because we're not seeing them today doesn't mean that they're not infesting the roof. Take a shot up there, please. You'll see uh, this is the other side of the house, but those maple leaves are all over that roof. Not a problem at all for the carpenter ants, and they'll like to get underneath that, uh, those roof shingles, and that's their favorite place to hang out, the inaccessible attic area, if you can't get to them. If we take a look at this tree over here, there's more carpenter ants. Um, we have a lot of shot holes in this tree, so I don't know, this, this stump is dead, so this really has no effect on this inspection. Okay, so we're inside this little shed. Um, it's actually a big shed, a little garage. I think it was intended to be a garage at one time and they just decided to make it a shed. But you'll notice they put a wood floor in. Bad idea. Wood over, wood over ground. There's no, there's no slab under it. It's already rotting. Um, they had all kinds of equipment in here. These are oil stains and probably other lawn mowers and stuff in here. But this is already rotting. This is not going to last long. Uh, this is not insect damage. You know, you gotta, it is a wood destroying organism. Could be a fungus. So if you notice fungal rot, is that not a wood destroying organism? Yeah, a lot of people call them wood destroying insect reports. But if you're calling it a wood destroying organism report, uh, there's funguses that, that damage wood. So you want to note that always better to put more stuff in and cover your inspection than have someone go, hey, why didn't you tell us about that? So let's just take a quick cursory look around. Good ventilation here. It's wide open on top. I'm just looking for bee nests and stuff like that. Um, got more spiders. The guy's a golfer. He likes corner furniture. Shouldn't have to spend a lot of time in here. Maybe you want to watch out for bats, see if they have bats. See something like this, don't move a lot of things, but good idea to pull it over. Just see if you got anything behind it. I'm really concerned, I haven't found a single mouse dropping. 
or a rat dropping in this entire building, this one or the other one. And I'm really surprised because this is outdoors. You'd think there'd be all kinds of mouse droppings out here. But there aren't. Wood shavings, but probably from construction. Somebody sawing something. Ah, still no mouse droppings. Very surprised at that. But that's the way it is, so good. Now here's some big moisture issue. We got a major rot issue here, and this may be uh, carpenter ant or termite damage. So I'm gonna move this bicycle out of the way. This is the Lance Armstrong Discovery Channel. Um, take lots of steroids and ride fast bicycle. All right, let's see what's down here. For some reason, this side, this corner, the other corners don't have this issue. Oh, look at this. So, you know, a lot of this may be the ground's wet. Remember there was a woodchuck coming in the back. I don't know how much moisture he brought in, but we got pecky rot here. This is a type of fungus that forms square, brown rot, forms square uh, patterns in the wood. Plus this is crappy press board. It's all oh, you can see here's the stone. So there's no slab, it's just right over gravel, which in itself is not a bad idea, except for I think on the outside, they may have a lot of wood. They might have built up the dirt on the outside. We're gonna go take a look. But this needs to be replaced. What I was concerned about is I saw a lot of dirt here. I wanna make sure this isn't termite damage. I don't know, can you get in here and see this? I mean, this is silk plate's gone. It's not a silk plate, really. I guess it's part of the foundation. What would they call this? I guess you could call it a silk plate. It's what the, the two by fours are sitting on. But this is all rotted out of here. I'm just seeing if I can scare up a termite or something. But nope. An earthworm. God, they really healthy earthworms around here. I guess it's time to go fishing. All right, let's go look at the outside if we can on that. Okay, so around here, um, I don't know if you can get in there. You do want to take a look. That is sitting right on the ground. The, the actual shed itself is sitting right on the ground. So let me go in there a little bit if I can get my rather rotund body in here. Uh, just, just to take a little better look. See, this is treated, it's not rotting, but this is. I'm really just doing this just on the outside chance I can find a termite burrowing around in here. Ah, some pipe. Anybody need some steel? All right, so not any termite issues, just water damage. Now that concludes our inspection. Oh, except for one thing. We said when we did the outside of the house that we found what's well, possibly um, a crawl space we missed the first time around. So let's go back to the basement, see what we missed. So on the back side of the house, we noticed a very small cutout door about this big. And then when we opened it, it was covered with foam board insulation. And we're not sure what that's for. It, maybe in an accessible area, who, who really knows? So we're gonna come back in, we missed something, I missed something. And as I'm coming in here now, I kind of see what I missed. Well, wait a minute though, let's go back, let me just check one thing. Let's go back around here. To me, that outside wall appears to be here. This is the outside wall. So this is a little, little. There, there's a hidden area here in this house. And one of the only ways to really find that, uh, other than I hope I'm just gonna go next door and find it, but one of the things you gotta do is you take a measurement from the inside, from one wall to the next. If you're not sure you got the outside wall, then you go on the outside and you do the same measurement. And if you come up with two feet difference, you know you got a hidden space in there. People do it all the time. They might have a crumbling foundation, and instead of lifting that side of the house up, 
putting form boards, pouring a new foundation, they'll just shim it a little and put up a new wall and leave a gap in there of a, you know, a foot or more, um, which is bad, bad construction, especially from an insect or wood destroying organism point of view. But we have this. Then we have this. I believe this is the back wall, but no, I'm wrong. Okay, so that's weird. Okay, let me get a can. Let me get an angle in here. Look at the spiders. Now a really good inspector would go in here, but I never said I was a really good inspector. But you must go in here if you're going to do a wood destroying organism report. You must go in here. Uh, no question about it. I'm not doing it today. I'm not dressed for it. I don't have a crawl suit. And uh, I'm not really doing this other than for this presentation. But let's look. Uh, see this, this padding, or rather this um, plastic they put down, is a great idea. It's black plastic. It's over dirt. It's a great idea, but it's not done properly. Uh, and what they did wrong which I don't like to be critical after the fact, everybody's a Monday morning quarterback, but everything I've read suggests that if you're gonna cover the dirt crawl area with plastic, that you leave about a quarter of it or so open. That way, um, let's say this was really wet and this was wet up here and you just all of a sudden cut off all the moisture, you don't want the wood drying out that fast. You want it to slowly dry out. So you leave a little bit open for air, but I'm gonna stick my head in. I got the same issues with spiders. I don't see any other insect pests. I don't see any mouse droppings. And if I was a real man, I would go in there. But I am a sissy, so I'm not gonna. So if that is the back wall, how come I can't find the back wall? This was built later. This is not part of this structure, original structure. This was built at a different time. It's different blocks, it's newer wood, and they've added this on because this is the original wall. This is where, on the other side of that sheetrock, that's where the corner of the house ends but this is an abutment built out on the back of the house. So keep your eyes open for stuff like that. That, if you look one more time, just if you remember when we opened up that, um, when we were standing outside the building, we opened up that little door, that's that form board. So there is an outside access to that. Um, that's it. So that just goes to show you, it's not, it's not really difficult to miss something. I mean, I, when I first walked through this, I, I could have swore this was the end. But uh, it's not. So as we were walking around the outside of the building, we saw these two perfectly drilled holes. They are not drilled by man. Those are from carpenter bees. So if this exterior structure is consistent or part of the wood destroying organism report for the property for a sale, you would have to note that. And if not, and it's just a home inspection you're doing just for pest control for a customer, you wanna let them know that uh, they've got carpenter bees. Hi, I'm Kevin Hurley, the owner of Pest Ed. Thank you for watching our videos, and we hope that you subscribe, because we're gonna have a lot more videos coming up, and we'd appreciate your input if there's anything you'd like to see.